back from our break, and our next speaker is Susan Gerbic, and her speech of her presentation is called March for Science and Now What? The Realist Skepticism on Wikipedia. A brief bio about Susan. Uh, Susan is a co-founder of the Monterey County Skeptics, founder of Skeptic Action, founder of uh, founder and leader of Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia Project and recurring contributor, contributor to the Skepticality Podcast, a regular contributor to Skeptical Inquirer and a fellow of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. She has focused much of her skeptical activism on people claiming to be clairvoyant mediums, such as Sylvia Brown and Tyler Henry, whom she calls grief vampires. <laughs> Susan holds an uh, honorary PhD in parapsychology from Thurwood College, meaning she has a fake diploma for investigating things that don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Susan. the battery case. Here's the battery case. All right, all right. You guys, I'm so happy to be here. Mark Edward and I came all the way from California mainly to come to Skeptic Camp. This is where we started. Mark and I came to Skeptic Camp in 2000 and Four Collins, I don't know, I was asked to speak and I didn't know what I was going to talk about, so I came up with this idea of doing a lecture on something that I was doing with Wikipedia. And I really didn't think it was going to be a thing at the time. It was just me just doing some Wikipedia editing. And I said, and people started joining me because this invention came along called Facebook. And people, I post on there that I was working on Facebook, uh, I mean, Wikipedia, and they're like, oh, what's that? What are you doing? Well, how did you work? Da, 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 da. And then they started joining. And then the next thing I know, I got an invitation to speak somewhere else and somewhere else. And then I had to have a blog and I had to have a name and I had to, oh my gosh. And now, this has been crazy. My life has been absolutely a, a joy. And it's crazy. But this is my first Skeptic Camp. My first lecture was at Fort Collins Skeptic Camp. So, yeah. yeah. congratulations. Yeah. You guys are also one of the very few Skeptic Camps that are still running. Skeptic Camp started in Denver. Skeptic Camp started in um, Colorado. Colorado was the place. You guys don't might not remember this, but this is where activism started out. And uh, a lot, well, one of the hubs. This is you're in the Denver Skeptics or the Colorado Skeptics. It's a big deal. So we're hoping to see if there's maybe you guys are going to come back and you know be the force that you were at one point. And the lectures I've heard so far and the comments and the questions are so intelligent. You guys, I'm really impressed. So. Anyway, let's get to my lecture because I know that we have only about a certain amount of time. So there's my little thingy, and we are live. Hopefully, they can hear me and everything. And uh, <laughs> yeah. and we're also videotaping for anybody to, to know it later. Okay. All right. So March for Science. Who marched for science? Anybody no. here at Fort Collins to march for science? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm really shocked. The only place that, I've done this lecture many, many times, the only place who didn't march for science it was in Bulgaria. Everybody else has marched for science, so you guys should be ashamed of yourselves. Be ashamed of yourselves. It was so much fun. Okay, this is Skeptic Camp Monterey County. I am a professional photographer, and uh, this is the photo I took that represents Monterey County Skeptic Camp, which is uh, in California, right below... Um, San Jose, right below, uh, many, many hours away from LA, in case you don't know where Salinas is. But this is our Monterey County Skeptic Camp. And you can see how exciting this was for everybody. We had people who had never, ever protested before. It started a whole new generation of people. As you can see, these young people, look at these little socks, they're adorable. <laughs> and they were so excited to be out and doing their first real protest. It's a nice generation that we have coming along. I'm really impressed with this. I don't know what they are now. The, they're not the millennials. They're whatever it is. This generation, I'm real impressed with. I think we have. I have great hope for our future now with the kids that we have. The, what are we calling them? Generation Z. Z. Generation Z. Z? Yeah, they're, no. they're the last generation last before they pop up. Oh. <laughs> 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 I think I've heard something else, but look at this. I mean, there's, they're, they're speaking for the woodpeckers. There's nobody in Fort Collins that spoke for the woodpeckers. Not, not even for the Bigfoots or whatever you have out here. Look at this poor guy. He didn't want to speak for them. But I just love this photo because it really sums up what was going on. There was thousands and thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people all over the world who were protesting um, the, or trying to speak out for science. And it was April of last year, and look. We solved all the problems, right? <laughs> Science has never been stronger. People are just like, you know, the government, right? 
Okay, so it didn't work. We came out in full in everywhere but Bulgaria and uh, Fort Collins. <laughs> and uh, we spoke to science and we stood up. So you, so you know, I guess it wasn't important because it didn't work anyway. What I'm here to do is to talk to you about what you can do to really support science. Some another kind of activism that really doesn't involve. Uh, getting in confrontational in front of people's faces or walking in rainy days and, and wearing woodpecker costumes. <laughs> so, um, I am Susan Gerbic. I am the leader and founder of the Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia Project. We are an international group. And I don't have my notes right here, so bear with me if I mess up this on my last slides. We recruit, we rewrite, we support, we improve. We are all about improving Wikipedia, <coughs> especially science pages scientific skepticism, and the paranormal. We don't necessarily focus on the chemistry pages or the science, you know, those pure mathematical science pages. That's not our expertise. Our expertise is the people behind the science, the people who are actually making the differences in the world, the people who are being doxxed, the people who are being attacked, the people who are being, uh, in some places, they're being murdered. I'm, I'm sure you guys are all aware that what's happening in some of these Middle Eastern countries where they're, they're being murdered for having a God belief that is different than what the culture says. So we're all about having their backs to represent those kinds of people. I do this by recruiting, training, and mentoring. Our project is uh, something that is very strong on community, which is different from an average Wikipedia editor. We are trying really hard to mentor all the way through, from, from the first time, first edit you make on Wikipedia till the to the thousandth edit you make on Wikipedia. We're constantly training, we're constantly recruiting, and we're constantly mentoring people, which is a, really a big difference in what keeps us um, active. All right, so this is Wikipedia. Wikipedia, if you may or may not know, ha it has many, many different languages. Uh, English is the most, uh, has the most articles, but guess what? The rest of the world doesn't all speak English. And it's important that Wikipedia pages not only are written in easy to read ways for maybe somebody at a high school level and then that's all those little blue links lets you click on something to go to if you don't quite understand what's in the sentence or what they're talking about you can click on it and go somewhere else it can be a bit of a problem anybody here who has talked about addictions you go into wikipedia you start clicking and <laughs> you start off reading about a flower that's growing in your garden and the next thing you are you're talking about ethiopia and who knows what you know so you have to be kind of Kind of keep it narrow, you know, stay to your subject, write it down before you start. So you'll fall down that path. And it's fabulous. Wikipedia is amazing for this. But we want Wikipedia written so that it's understandable for the average person. Also, we want it written so that people in other countries, other languages can read it and and get it from for themselves. We don't want them to have to rely on Google Translate. We don't have to wait for their child to tell them what it says. Who you know has um, learning English in school? We want them to be able to read it for themselves and understand. There's a lot of reasons why we we have to do that, but it's important to us. So I have an all international group. We're all over the world, and we are writing in multiple languages. Um, okay. So who knows who this is? Come on, I put this slide in here just for you guys here in Colorado. Anyone know who he is? <laughs> I am really oh, shocked. Oh, Nobody knows who he is? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, the go. guy who is just convicted. Yes. Uh, oh. Romanoff. Yes, yep. Dan. Hey, oh. got it. Stanley. Stan Romanek. Romanek. Okay, so this is, I put this slide in here, this whole little thing I'm going to talk to you about just for you guys and for the lecture I did yesterday because you're different. So we wrote Stan Romanek's Wikipedia page in 2012, I believe, and he was nobody. He's a guy here in Colorado who is trying to get UFO landing strips, you know, and mm -hmm. supporting people yeah, to, okay. to vote for, uh, you know, candidates that were pro UFO, and he was going to get lights. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so this guy, he also did this, the Boo video. Do you guys yeah, remember the Boo oh, video? Yeah. 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 Remember him now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, I don't know if you can see real well, but there's Boo, right there. It's, it's an alien that's looking in his window. <laughs> Oh. And he just so happened to have like a camera with a tripod like I have over here just pointed at his window. Mm -hmm. And if you watch the video, you'll see him kind of walking around. And I don't know why there's a video pointing at the window at a dark window at night. There's no reason for that. 
that I can think of, but he just has the camera rolling and you can see him walk in front of it and then after a minute or so, about enough time for him to walk outside, um, you see this, <laughs> just coincidentally, you know. So you see the, the alien, this boo, pop up and he's like up there and he's like around and then all of a sudden he goes down like this and you can't see him, he's under the, and then he pops back up and he's like this, looking around and down again and you're like, Oh, wow! You know, so he's saying that aliens had visited his house. I believe he said that he lived on the second floor of a building, and I think other researchers in the skeptic community discovered that, no, he lives in a single-story house. And um, <laughs> anyway, so they were able to recreate the video. There's a lot of really amazing things done about this, but he kind of faded off and he went away. But he still did lectures for um, uh, UFO things, and then some other things happened to him that were not so pleasing. Some some arrests and stuff, uh, dealing with pornography, child pornography, and uh, he said that it was put on there by the UFO people, and the, or the, the men in black added those those there, and then he blamed his stepson, it's just horrible, awful. But in the meantime, what happened is, Netflix did a, uh, oh, here's his Wikipedia page, right there. So we wrote that in like 2012, like I said, it's nobody's getting it, nothing, nothing, nothing at all happening. Here's more of his, uh, his Wikipedia page, you can read it later, it's, it's, it's long, it's detailed, it should be written for anybody to be able to understand. 34 citations, it's a really good Wikipedia page. My team, GSOW, this is the kind of content we turn out. We don't turn out crap, we don't turn out little studs, we put out good stuff. And it takes us a while to read them, write them. So this is what happened. Netflix did a documentary on him called The Stan Romanek Story, so that might be why he's kind of fresh in your mind now. You might have seen him advertised on Netflix. What happened? Netflix comes out with this thing, I think it was in July of last year, it wasn't that long ago, and people start going onto the search engines to see who this guy is, and what happens is, they go to where? Wikimedia, because that's one of the first hits that's gonna come up, right? So these are the stats. I don't know if people on the screen can see it. This is a logarithmic scale. So I need to point this out. This is a tool that anybody has uh, uh, access to. But the logarithmic scale, what it does is it's trying to force all the, all the um, points, data points onto one piece of paper, well, virtual paper, you know, one screen. So, so this is not relative. So you can see he was tooling along. According to this from 2015, I'm sorry I shouldn't be touching the screen, at about 50 page views a day. 50 page views a day. That's not much. That's like what I would get on my Wikipedia pages. That's nothing, really. And then all of a sudden, it starts hitting up here in the 500 to 1,000 page views a day. I don't know if that's whenever you start to go through the, the uh, acquisitions of, of the child porn or if that's when they were preparing for it or the word got out that... Netflix was going to do this documentary on him. And look at that. I can't even point to it. Here, I've got a little red thing here. Ooh, check it out. 50,000 page views in one day. 50,000 people were looking at this Wikipedia page in one day. Good gracious, who would have thought? And then it goes down a little bit. But here it is still. As of March 25th, 2018, he's still at 1,000 page views a day. So this is important because we need to make sure that really well-written information is out there, not only for you guys, but for the media. They are getting their information from here. Who's a re are you, who was telling me that they're a retired yeah, um, uh, reporter? Mm -hmm. The media is under, has so many problems right now with just funding. They used to have large rooms of people to help them write articles and to do research for them and so on. And now it's down to one person doing all the research and information, and they have to handle those social media accounts, and they have to come out with a media uh, blog every day. He's nodding and he's about to cry. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. There's tons of stuff going on with the media. They do not have time to do the research that they used to, and it's, it's, it's sad, it's horrible. But you know what? We, as a community, need to help them out a little bit. So let's get this information out there in great places for them to find it so that when they go to go do a report on something, it's in one place. And not for them to take it for face value of what's on Wikipedia, but to go to those citations to the bottom and read those, follow them, and get their information. So where is the media going to go to find their information? 
Start with W. Wikipedia. Okay. Wikipedia. You're out there with me. Okay, so <laughs> this is more of his page. Yeah, sorry. Right. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a second story. If I was to change hats, I would change into another hat that I and Mark Edward and, and a few other people were very interested in psychics. As we said, as you said, uh, grief vampires is what we call the people who claim to be able to communicate with the dead. They're latching on to you. They're trying to get to your emotions and your money and your influence. So anyway, I'm not going to talk too much about all the stuff we're doing. Mark's going to be talking about that next. But Tyler Henry, who knows who Tyler Henry is? Besides Mark Edwards. <laughs> Sort of. Okay, Tyler, I'm kind of glad that, you know, I've been talking about these psychics and we, we talk to them and they're like, who, what, what? And I kind of like that because in the world that Mark and Edward and I live in, it feels like we live and breathe these grief vampires all the time and it feels like everybody's involved and everybody is, is so interested in it. And it's nice to see people in the elevator or, you know, wherever we're at breakfast or something and they're like, I have no idea who you're talking about. It's like, oh, cool, that's wonderful. You have no idea who we're talking about. So Tyler Henry, and it really doesn't matter if you know too much about this guy, it's a story that counts. This is guy is brand new, he's on the E Network, he has his third season of uh, Hollywood Medium. So whenever I learned of Tyler Henry of January 2016, I knew nothing about him. And what happened was, is that when he became to my attention, and I'm going on the internet to find out who he is, because somebody asked me, is he the real deal? Because it looks like he is. I Google him, and, I, and there's no criticism. Because he was so good. Because this, he had just come out. So I said, well, fine, I'll write an article. And I write articles for Skeptical Inquirer, and that's a notable journal with editorial and so on. So it can be used on Wikipedia pages. So what happens is, is I write these articles, and I'm up to like seven or eight now. I've written all kinds of articles about Tyler Henry and other psychics, but this one in particular, because there was no criticism. There was nothing. So when, when somebody writes notable criticism about somebody, and it's not attacking them you know, because of the way they look or something, but because of their actions or what they're saying, then that article can go on Wikipedia, and that's where it got. Somebody put it up on the Wikipedia, well, somebody wrote a Wikipedia page for Tyler Henry. It wasn't us. Um, and they used my article to kind of start and some of the other articles. So um, what happened is, uh, oh, here he is with one of the biggest skeptics in the world. Dr. Phil will be happy to tell you that he is the biggest skeptic ever. Uh, no, I'm serious, he will. He'll tell you that because that's what he says, and he's the biggest skeptic ever. Anyway, so he appeared on Dr. Phil's show, gave him full endorsement, so guess what? There's lots of media attention for him. So here's Tyler Henry's this page view stats. Let's see how well you can see this from here. This is going from February of 2016, and you can see these little stats are going up high, 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 high here, and then really low. This is season one, and this is when they're starting to hype them in season two, and then down here uh, at about uh, 500 page views a day, it goes up here and it starts spiking in season three. That's whenever I, I made this slide. It was right at the beginning of season three, which was May of 2017. In this limited amount of time, which is 2016 to 2017, about 15 months, he'd already received 849,490 page views. That's a lot of people looking to see who this guy is. So, I also have a Wikipedia page. Um, it's, I'm not notable for being, you know, I only speak to people like you guys. I'm not on TV, I'm not anybody of any note other than just for the skeptic community. But there is a Wikipedia page for me, and it shouldn't get a lot of page views. So that works as kind of a control. So these are the Wikipedia page views for the Susan Gerbic page. I'm speaking in the third person now. The Royal Susan. The Royal The Royal Me. Well, we. The Grand. The Grand. So these are the same dates as the Tyler Henry page. And you can see season one. Season two, season three. Also, uh, what, uh, but what I need to point out, here they are together, is the bottom line is the Susan Gerbic page views. That is hundreds of page views. The top line that you see, the blue, remember this is a logarith logarithmic scale, is thousands of page views. But, so people are clicking on one and going to the other. But what does it tell us? It tells us that they're, they are reading 
at least the, the, uh, the Wikipedia page of the most notable critic on his page. Not in the one for one, but they are reading it somewhat. At least having some kind of criticism is helping. What do you notice about the Susan Gerbic stats? Who sees anything unusual there? Can you see? They're spiking alongside Tyler Henry's. Right, they're, pi they're spiking oh, identical. Yeah. I mean, look at this. If you look up here, ooh, it's a little thing. Yeah, you can see right. like there's two dots here, two dots here. It's like a, it's like here's two towers right there, two towers mm -hmm. there. Here's a little mm -hmm. globule in here. It's obvious that they're going from one page to the other. It's obvious from the spikes. But can you see anything odd about the Susan Gerbic stats? A couple big dips. Yeah, very good. Yeah, very big. a couple big dips right here and right here, and they do not correspond to Tyler Henry's page. Now, why? <gasps> Somebody, edited. Somebody edited his Wikipedia page to remove the links, too. Somebody removed the, yes, so somebody went to the Wikipedia page for Tyler Henry and removed the entire criticism section. So Wikipedia has these rules that are called biography of living persons, which means that when you're trying to add an edit to a page that is of a living person, you have to be very careful. The citation you put in has to be really good. It has to come from a strong, notable source, published in a place that's notable, not a blog, not a website. And it can't be just Joe Sobody, somebody from somewhere that is making the comment. It has to be somebody of note, usually, or a professional reporter or somebody like that. So, and that's because Wikipedia is so powerful. We can't just put gossip up on a Wikipedia page. It has to be done in such a way that it makes, uh, that it's well thought out. Well, the, the stuff that I have written about Tyler Henry is very careful to be sure that it follows all the rules of the biography of living persons. So as soon as it was noticed that the criticism section was removed, it was added back in. And, it, and we know it was a Tyler Henry fan because on Wikipedia, every edit is visible. You can see every edit you want from the beginning of Wikipedia if you're willing to click long enough. And what you can see is that they usually leave a little summary that says something or the reason why they removed an edit or, or whatever. And the person who removed the edit said that, that we were violating biography of a living person by adding criticism of somebody. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. And then their comment was, remove Susan Gerbic from Wikipedia. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen. Okay. So I have another story. I actually have a story and a half. And then I'm done. And then we'll go to Q&A. So... Uh, anybody heard of this? What the yes. hell? Yay! What? Two? Two of you guys? Three? This was, where did you hear about it? Oh, yeah. I watched it. On Netflix, yeah. right? Okay, so what the hell, and I'm going to be generous with this, is this is a documentary about veganism. And it's very loose with the science. It's very, very, very loose with their science. So they had a Wikipedia page, and somebody, I'd never heard of it. I didn't even have Netflix at the time. And somebody wrote to me on Facebook, we get lots of comments on Facebook, and they said, hey, Susan Gerbic, what's going on with the Wikipedia page for What's a Health, you know? And here was the Wikipedia page for What's a Health, and there was no criticism on it. It was just like, hey, it was an Indiegogo kind of thing, and then here's all these people who were featured on the show. And it made it look like they're reputable scientists. Some of these names, like a registered dietitian of PCRM. <laughs> and, and, and she's not linked. There's no hyperlink to her name. That means she's not notable enough to have a Wikipedia page, or at least not written yet. So she's just somebody. We don't know if they're critics. We don't know if they're, you know, if they're notable. We don't know anything about these people. Here's a staff attorney for Center of Food Safety. Here's a senior policy inter analysis of center. You know, these names, they look make it look like there's a lot of science going on, a lot of doctors on there. You're looking at a documentary, those are very carefully edited to influence you and to make your emotions fall in line and you're, you leave it and you're like, yes, I will never, you know, eat an animal. I'm not going to even look at animals again. They're going to give me cancer and I'm going to eat only raw uh, carrots and stuff for the rest of my life. And, you know, so you leave those things. They're done that way intentionally. It's marketing. So, there was no, there was absolutely no criticism on there. We went on the internet trying to find some. Here's, here's the Wikipedia page, seven citations. So that means there's a lot of room for stuff, right? So you can put it in there. So we went to, and I found, one of my editors found this guy. I don't know if you know who he is, but I'm dying to meet him. He also has met uh, uh, Tyler Henry. Oh, yeah. It's ZDogMD. 
He's a real medical doctor who has a YouTube channel, and I guess he's been on TV quite a bit, too. Um, and he watched the movie. And if you read this, don't read this, I'll read it to you. It says, got a Facebook friend telling you to watch the Netflix documentary, What the Hell? We wasted an hour and a half, so you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy watched the thing, and he's got a Wikipedia page, so he's notable. So when this guy, uh, Z Dog MD, has a real name that starts with, it's, it's, I can't remember his name, it starts with a, it's uh, like Czech or something, oh, I shouldn't have said that online. He's got some name that's hard for me to remember, it's, but it's got a Z in it. Anyway, so if you look Z Dog up MD, you'll see that he's got a Wikipedia page, so he's notable, so his opinion matters. Because he's an MD, he can talk about what's the hell. He couldn't talk about psychics, he couldn't talk about uh, UFOs or anything like that because he's not notable for that. You have to have notability in an area before you can be quoted. <clears throat> so here's what he said. We, and we put this on the This is what it says right on the Wikipedia page. That was the stupidest expletive thing that I've ever seen. I feel like I've lost expletive brain cells. <laughs> so that is on the Wikipedia page. Lost, I checked. Of the What's the Hell Wikipedia page. So anybody who's looking at that is going to get that reference because we're in a society now where people want to know, sum it up real quick for me, what's going on? They don't want to read the entire Wikipedia page to get to the end and go, oh, I guess it's not, okay. They want it, you know, like the 10 seconds, five seconds, what is it? So this is, so we needed some more criticism because that wasn't enough. And and it kind of was happening at the same time. So I know Harriet Hall. Anybody know Harriet Hall? Dr. Harriet Hall. Oh, look at all these names, okay. The crowd goes crazy with Harry Hall. Love her. She writes for science-based medicine. She is a medical doctor, a flight surgeon. She's she well, she was a retired Air Force surgeon. Wonderful person. We said, Harriet, could you please watch this movie and do a blog on it? Which is, it's it's a blog. She blogs at science-based medicine, but it's considered more than a blog. It's 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 a. It's not a normal blog. It's it's um, it's like notable on itself to some extent. So in other words, we can quote it because she's notable and science-based mes- medicine is not like the Daily Mail or something. It's it's a notable <laughs> place. So I said, please, Harriet, could you watch this video and report back on it? So she did. <coughs> she watched it and she wrote back to me and she says, Susan, you owe me two hours. Okay, that was horrible. I can't believe you made me watch that. So she watched, she pulled out this blog uh, on what the hell, and we were able to use it as a citation because it, there wasn't anything. So this is the page view stats for what the hell, and you can see it starting out here with zero. This is uh, June of 2017. That's when it came out. And then you can see these stats going up here to 4,000, 7,000. People are watching, looking at the Wikipedia page. 7,000 people a day are looking at this Wikipedia page and getting nothing but fluff. So here we go. Up here, this red arrow is showing when we became involved. So there's 8,000 and there's 9,000 page views happening at the time when we, when's the criticism got on there. And then it's come down a little bit. Here is 6,000 and now it looks like it's leveling off. When I wrote this, when I made this slide October of 2017, it was hitting about a thousand page views a day still. So this is important because we have, I mean, there's so many problems going on in the world, but if we can get this information well written, notable, wonderfully made Wikipedia pages that invite people to read them from the beginning to the end, because that's one of our goals, to try to really get people to be interested in the whole page. But we still know that lots of people won't, so we want to make sure the lead, the beginning part, is really well written. Uh, This is what Harriet said. For the audio, I will repeat it. What the health espouses the fairy tale that all major diseases can be prevented and cured by eliminating meat and dairy from the diet. It is biased and misleading and is not a reliable source of scientific information. So that is what we have on the Wikipedia page that Harriet said. Now she also goes on to say that there's nothing wrong with veganism. The problem is, is the, the claims they're making on this video, this documentary, are anti-science. They're going to the extreme, and it's not science, but it's there to influence and have, has a clear agenda, like most documentaries do. Mm-hmm. So, last little bit. This is Stanley Plotkin. How many people here know of Stanley Plotkin, besides Mark Edward, who's seen this slide before? <laughs> He's been to so many of my demonstrations. So Stanley Plotkin is a person that you should, I'd like to think you know who he is, but I didn't know who he was. I put people through training and part of the process is they have to rewrite a Wikipedia page. 
This sat on our Wikipedia page list of things to do for years. Somebody finally pulled it off and made a Wikipedia page for him. This is the current Wikipedia page. Well, it was when I made the slide, but this is it. This is how beautiful it is. He is an uh, American physician. He's born in 1932. He was, uh, works with uh, vaccine manufacturers, and he was, uh, the, he was pivotal in the discovery of a vaccine against rubella, which is German measles. He's also been uh, working with uh, uh, vaccines for uh, rabies. And some other vaccines. He was critical in the in the in the founding of these vaccines. If he didn't directly do it, he worked on the teams. So in other words, he's a pivotal, important person for vaccinations. This is a man who, when he was getting, you know, he was like 20 years old or so, he had a decision to make. He wanted to be a pilot, but then he also loved medicine. So he's trying to decide what should I do with my life: pilot, medicine, pilot, medicine. I guess he could have gone into the Air Force, but I don't. So, so he's trying to decide, so he went into medicine, and he, he's, he did these amazing things where he's helped create vaccines for the world, saved millions of lives possibly. And then when his light, in his 70s, he decided to go back and get his pilot's license. That's really awesome. So this is just some more of his page. Right now, at the, when I made the slide release, there was 23 citations. Beautiful page. Here's what it looked like when we got a hold of it. Five citations. I call this a non-scroller because you do not have to scroll to see the entire page. It's that bad. It's a stub. It's an awful Wikipedia page. So this is how it existed for years. It didn't tell his story in full. It didn't explain who he was. It just like, eh, some guy, you know, and they put the picture up. So one of the things we did after the Wikipedia page got up, and it was Paul Offit who sent me on this guy's track to tell me, hey, you know what, you should add this guy to your list. So I wrote to Paul Offit, who's an amazing person, Linda knows him, and uh, he's, I wrote to him, I said, could I get Stanley Plotkin's, you know, email, you know, does he email? It's 1932, he was born, I don't know. And uh, he said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you his email. So he wrote his email, and I wrote to him, and I told him what we did. I said, here's your Wikipedia before, here's your Wikipedia after, page after. And he looked at it, and he was just like, wow. And uh, he forwarded on, he sent me on one of those reply all kind of things to all his family members. You, you can see it had like his sister-in-law, you know, and it had all the last, last names blocking on. He was really, really impressed. Then he sent me back this thank you. And here's what he said, and I'll repeat it for the camera. I am flattered that you undertook this, especially as I approach oh. the end of my career and ask myself whether or not I have accomplished anything. Oh. Oh. Think about that. that. Just think about that. This man is thought he was going to be just ignored. He thought, well, I guess nobody cares. Nobody knew. <coughs> nobody knows. It's heartbreaking, isn't it? So this is where, why it's so important to do this. And to, to end, wait, wait, these are not, yeah. Let me just whisper something in your ear. You, so you don't forget, because you forgot this last night. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah. Why did you just say it yourself? <laughs> okay. So we're going back to the March for Science, and the idea is, is that yes, we can march for science, we can get up, and it's great to get passionate and get your woodpecker outfit on and your, your socks and get out there and march for science, but really we need to think about the actions we can do because we have limited time. We have very little resources. We are not... Um, you know, we have jobs, we take care of our family, we have kids, we have, you know, things to do. I have cats, I have a garden, you know, there's important things in life. And we don't have that kind of time. So think about your interactions on, on social media. Really consider, is your best time spent arguing with a troll or arguing with somebody? You're throwing this stuff out there and you're putting it on this creationist page and you're arguing with them. And the argument I hear from them all the time is, Somebody else might be watching, and maybe they're on the fence, and they're going to change their mind. I'm like, well, there's like three people watching, you know? Put it on Wikipedia. Get your, use your time wisely. If you can get this stuff off on Wikipedia, you can change minds that you would never thought that you would change. You're not going to know about it, so there's no glory in it. But you really are going to change minds. This is where we need to be spending our time. And we need to... Marching for science is great and all that, whatever. But this is really something you can do. And you can do it from Fort Collins, Colorado, or anywhere in Colorado you want. 
you just need an internet connection and we do run everything from Facebook. So if you don't have a Facebook account, well then talk to me and we'll figure out how you're going to get a Facebook account. So I'm going to end on numbers because I just wanted to end on something positive than Stanley Plotkin, which is so sad. One of my editors, I did this lecture in Poland just this last summer. Mark and I entered, uh, lectured all over Europe. And one of my editors said, that's it. And he went back to his hotel room and translated Stanley Plotkin's page into Polish. So he's got an English page and a Polish page. So that's, his name is Adam. He's a really awesome uh, editor of mine. So numbers. Right, we keep track of all the Wikipedia pages that we have written or rewritten, <coughs> like Stanley Plotkin's page. It has to be a major improvement. <coughs> We're not talking about just the small edits we make every day, which we do lots of. Uh, but we keep track of all the Wikipedia pages. And we're already at 562 pages that we have done. 562 pages, not all in English, some of them in other languages as well. Those 562 pages, we keep track of the page view stats. How many times they've been accessed by somebody looking at them. And those page views, we're hitting 34,000 page views a day. We're at 960,000 page views a month. And we're already at over 24 million page views. So that is the impact that Four cons, really, when you think about it, Skeptic Camp, 2000, whatever it was, 10, 2011, forced me to create this group, and I want to thank you. It forced me to actually do it, yeah. And uh, it forced me to just sit down and take it seriously and make it so that we were actually had a name and everything. So I want to mention that we do have a website. I launched it Wednesday because I wanted it ready for you guys and everybody else. Um, we're going to be getting a lot more media attention in the next few months, and Mark will talk about that in a minute. It has nothing to do with Wikipedia, but I wanted places to make us look even more serious. So I have a website. It's called About Time. I don't even have business cards because I got the URL Wednesday night at like 11.30 at night, and then went to bed and packed the next morning and barely made my plane to come here. So um, on About Time, there's all kinds of information about grief vampires, uh, there's a Susan Kirby page, there's a Monterey County Skeptics page, which we do our own Skeptic Camps. We've had four, four successful Skeptic Camps. Also, we have uh, Girl Skepticism of Wikipedia on there, and there is a donate page. So if you are interested in this and you want to help me come to conferences like this, we would appreciate a donation. It allows me to be able to, to go and lecture to smaller groups. I like lecturing to groups like this because these are the people, you are the kind of people who are the more likely to join because you want to do something, you want to be activists, but you just don't really know where to go. And it's a lot of fighting against people on Facebook and Twitter, and we really want you to stop doing that. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Okay, so sorry I went a little long, but um, I'm happy to answer all your questions. Yes, Linda. Uh, and how, have you had any wiki wars on a page going back and forth, changing back and forth? Uh, I remember with uh, attachment therapy, uh, trying to keep the information real, it was months going back and forth, and, and I, I'm not sure that uh, that sort of thing is actually possible now. Well, you can have some Wars. We have very few because most Wikipedia pages that are concerning some of the big names like Mormonism, Scientology, uh, homeopathy, um, you know, some of those big name things, those pages are well written and they don't want anybody to touching them because anything that goes on there has to be discussed before it's made live because it's just such a hot topic. So we don't we don't deal with those kind of pages. It's a feeding frenzy and it's a waste of my my people's time because it's very valuable. It takes a long time to create a page. So, um, but something like attachment therapy or some of these other ones you mentioned, I made notes. I'm going to look into it. But some of these other ones that you that one that you mentioned earlier, what was called? You said you're just starting to watch it. It's called oh parental alienation. Parental, parental alienation. I'm going to have to look at that. Pages like that that are just kind of starting out or maybe for fringier things like spontaneous human combustion. 
was terrified of it growing up. And that page, they re rewrote it for me. And believe it or not, it's one of our top viewed pages. We've had over a million page views since we've re re rewritten that because there's so many people who are still interested in this, these topics. So spontaneous human combustion is a big one. But like we did facilitate a communication. We wrote that Wikipedia page. from We, we had to rewrite it. And we've had no, no problems. We have very few problems because we don't, my editors won't engage with like a troll kind of thing. And most people who try to change these pages that are not constructively trying to change them, they're here and gone. They're, they're, they're getting to a point where they're giving up when it comes to Wikipedia. They're going off onto other, I don't know, they're arguing with the rest of people who are trying to, those are the people who are on Facebook and Twitter trying to argue with you. Those are those people that aren't gonna listen. Any link you put up, they're not reading it. They're not listening. They're la 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 la. And it's only making your blood pressure go up. So just you know, knock it off. <laughs> or they create their own type of Wikipedia. Yeah, I've heard that too. That they're going to create their own Wikipedia. Good luck with that. That's that's great because that'll just keep them busy for the rest of their lives, and they, they won't have anywhere to go. It's kind of like conservative. Yes. In fact, I want to mention this too. Is that Wikipedia, I have 120 people more or less editing Wikipedia. Almost 60 of those people are still in training. And um, Wikipedia editors, there's hundreds of thousands of Wikipedia editors. And those people are really the, the work, workers of the, of the uh, Wikipedia. We follow all the rules of Wikipedia. Yes, we have a really scary name, Gorilla Skeptics. But we are very, very uh, conscious of the fact that we have to be very clear following the rules. We're, we're, we're very... Um, uh, very conscious of that. Uh, we publicize the pages that we work on so we know that people could, if they wanted to, find out who my editors are and so we need to make sure we're right on the, uh, we're, we're doing a good job. But, um, uh, Wikipedia is, um, where was I going with this? I like it! That we have, to, oh, we don't have the edit wars and people don't bother, oh, I forgot, I lost my train of thought, go ahead. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay, you didn't, it wasn't you. I, I think forgot. I heard you say earlier that you train people to do this. Yes, everything happens on a Google document. Um, I give, I have all the lessons already done, everything's done. It's videos of me talking and showing you how to edit as an amateur, I do not use any specialized codes, words, anything like that because I intentionally keep myself, the personality you see here is what you will see on a, a video of me teaching you how to edit. I don't use words like tilde and bar and all those other, I say that little line that you'll find on your keyboard that's right above the enter key, that's the one I want you to use. And, Tilde is that little squiggly line that's up here on this thing right here on your keyboard, and I'll put a picture of it. You know, I really do that because a lot of our editors, half of them are computer programmers who do everything, and then you've got other people who are barely using, uh, making their first edit for the first time, and they're just intimidated to heck. But some of those people have joined us, and they are amazing people once you get them trained. So all the training happens on Google Documents, but you have to be on Facebook because all the communication about Everything we do is happens on something called the secret cabal. And it is on Facebook, it is a secret group, and it is we discuss and we're friends and we know each other and we go to conferences and it's just it's a blast. It's an absolute blast. We have a secret handshake. No, <laughs> what about the magic underwear? Oh I can't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. Sorry, I can't talk about the magic underwear. Yes. How long does it take somebody to get through the training? How long does it take somebody to get through training? So I am told by the people who've gone through training that it is like taking an undergraduate college class that you enjoy, that you can do from home, that has fun peers all over the world speaking multiple languages. Um, you can do it with a cat, naked, whatever you want. Um, nobody cares. Uh, your grammar, nobody cares about your grammar. Live stream. Yeah, it's a live stream. It's in the secret cabal. So it's like that. So it's like taking an undergraduate class, like maybe learning a new language, kind of, but with a lot of friends, people who become your friends. So it can take you, it takes somebody about three months to get through my training. I've had people do it in a few weeks. Those are people who are really focused on doing it because I give you all the lessons ahead of time. So you could just go through and just go less and less and less and less. And a lot of them are videos, and some people tell me that if they binge watch them, that that night, that night they hear my voice in the back of the dreams. Oh, dreams. No. <laughs> That's scary. So it takes about three months to an average person to finish training, but you do it at your own pace. You have your own personal trainer, which is usually me. 
And what we do is we go through the training with you and any time you have a, any kind of complication or problem, you can either post in the secret cabal, and since we're international, somebody's going to answer that question for you almost 24-7 because, you know, we got some people who are up until 2 or 3 in the morning here, just in America, but, and you're posting and somebody in Australia is, you know, 4 in the afternoon to them. And I have a huge Australian group. Australians are awesome, and I am saying that the camera. They are the best. I toured Australia, and also they, uh, the Skeptic Zone podcast has me on all the time. So Skeptic Zone is constantly, you know, talking about uh, GSOW, and their people are constantly joining. I just had one a couple days ago. Okay, so it, is that a Facebook? Do you just go to Facebook, search, and search the Secret Cabal? And you won't find it. I can't imagine what you find. You can't be it. No, How? secret. How? Follow secret. You have to come to me, and usually the easiest way is come to Susan Gerbeck, you can friend me, um, I'm friendly, and you can come to my Facebook page and send me a private message. I need to know your email, I need to know your username on Wikipedia, so you have to open an account, and then you say, I'm ready to join, and I'd like to know where you learned, because I kind of want to know how much you know, so you say, oh, I went to the Fort Collins Skeptic Camp, I was sitting in the room, and I was the one really quiet, like going, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> And um, I like people to think about it first. I do have business cards and stickers for everyone, so make sure that you don't walk away without them. But that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. And I don't want to give you too many links and stuff like that, because the people that want to come to my project are people who are OK with doing research. <laughs> so I don't give you a lot of links. But if you go to About Time, the website, you will see that there's all kinds of uh, videos and lectures I've done. This video lecture will be up there as well. But um, other questions? Will you start using the, uh, the skeptics? Oh, I love that. I got that on video. I love that. I believe in shit. I, I gotta come up with somebody doing that to make it more Wikipedia related. Maybe we'll do a maybe we'll do a, a W or something for Wikipedia. You know, maybe the Wikipedia thing. I believe in with citation needed or something like that. <laughs> so, any other questions? And like I said, I'm happy to Wikipedia forever. <laughs> Wikipedia forever. Oh, I like her. Citation needed. We need a citation needed sign too. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else you want to do? You guys are having too much fun with that. Um, kind of along what Linda was asking about, um, I have seen some uh, historical events when they occur. There is a Wikipedia page immediately created, and I see this battle for supremacy on who owns the truth. For instance, in a, a war, uh, let's say like what's going on in Syria right now, uh, people battle over the control of the Wikipedia page. And you can follow it. Like Absolutely. Saying, yes. All the editing, everything, it was this and now it's this, and who did it and what date and time. And you see like literally warring factions. That's how important Wikipedia is. Yeah. It to get is, it to make sure it that it is to say what was the truth of what happened at this time, and we can almost like live stream it based on the Wikipedia yes. changes. Do you ever do besides people and maybe some concepts? I don't know. Um, ever do events? I can, the only event uh, I can think of was the uh, arrest of Rosa Marks, who was a psychic in uh, Florida who built people out of millions of dollars. And I remember <coughs> somebody doing uh, an article on the arrest of her, and it was kind of a live kind of thing. But they ended up, uh, it eventually became just the Rosa Marks Wikipedia page. But we kind of avoid those, but you're absolutely 100%, I, I, I commend you for mentioning this. I haven't had anybody mention this before, but. I should mention that if there is something happening in the world, an event, a storm, a murder, an assassination, anything like that, the best place to go to is Wikipedia. Somebody's creating a Wikipedia page at that moment. And if you look at the top page, which is, um, and I might have this right here, let me see. This is something you probably have never even noticed. Uh, yeah, here it is. So um, on a Wikipedia page, there is a talk page. See here, right here in the corner, it says talk. You don't have to have an account. This is where the entire discussion is happening on Wikipedia by Wikipedia editors. And if you read that, when anything's happening in the world, you will understand exactly what's going on and getting the best sites and the best sources. Because you'll look at it and you'll see this discussion and somebody will say, I'm reading that the person who did the, who did the assassination was 
blah, 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 and he was from blah, 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 or whatever. And, you're, and then you'll see other people commenting saying, that's being reported by Fox News. We have to wait for a better site. <laughs> and then somebody below that will say, you know what, I'm, okay, New York Times is reporting it now. And somebody will say, here comes, here comes CNN. And then somebody says, okay, that's good. That's good to go. Put it up. And somebody will put it up on the page. They work in tandem with each other in a lot of ways. Not maybe Syria and stuff. That's really serious stuff. But like a, a live event that's happening. And you can see the discussion. And they all, they're talking about it. They're on it. You've got these people sitting there just like following the news like crazy. And they're having a discussion with everything that's happening as the moment is happening. And they're not going to put any gossip. And they're not going to put any rumor. And they're not going to put anything up there that's um, uh, not been substantiated by real journalistic stuff. And if it does get on there, they'll say, uh, like some of the Parkland shooting and some of these others, it starts out like a conspiracy because it's, it's being put out by these notable places. They might mention that on the Wikipedia page and they'll say, this is what we thought initially. It was reported by these places. But after you know a few hours, we realized this is actually what happened. And so that's one way of getting rid of these conspiracy theories is to have it. And um, yes, we acknowledge this is what we thought. Now this is what we believe is true and the reason why we think it's true. Wikipedia is an extremely important place to go to. So if you need breaking news, CNN's fine, but Wikipedia is even better because those, those editors are on it. Any other questions? Nobody has a hard question for me? Well, I don't know if it's hard for you, but I'd be interested with a show of hands, how many people in this room have edited a Wikipedia That's page a good already? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. How many people continue doing that? It's in school. Is it like uh, edits like a uh, grammar, or are you guys making real substantial edits? It varies. Mm. Usually it's adding Easter. citations. So, so yeah, I think that um, anybody can edit Wikipedia. You do not need an account. And uh, well, hit the button. Um, okay, so I guess I'll. I, he says the video is over, so now I can take the dirt. No. <laughs> <laughs> the video camera is still recording, but we're still live. No, um, you're not. You're not still live. Oh, they said the sound isn't clear. Sorry. No, it started pixelating. Oh well, this is on the live feed. They're saying that it's uh, having. I'm sorry. I have a video coming. I'll show you later. <laughs> Any other questions since we're going to go? And I'm, I'm here for a while, so Mark and I are going to hang out with you guys afterwards. I'm happy to look at anything you've written. If you have a serious technical question, we have, we have internet. I'll be happy to look at it and um, give you my opinion on it, because I do that all the time with, with people that have nothing to do with scientific skepticism. OK, thank you. Oh, Yay. Cheers. 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 Cheers.